Hello, everybody. I come before you in the name of Jesus, and somebody asked me not too long ago what day is today, and I found myself wondering, well, what day is today? Well, is today Saturday or what? But this is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. I come before you, and I bring the shofar. I'm going to play this for you, my brother, my sister, and I want you to know how much Jesus loves you, how much God is thinking about you. So today as I play this instrument, the shofar, I want you to know that God is thinking about you. He loves you. He hasn't forgotten about your prayers. He's thinking about you, my friends. So today, when you hear this sound, it's an anointed sound. There's a powerful prayer behind this sound. And the prayer is that when you hear this sound, my friend, that somehow, someway, Holy Spirit is going to stir you up. Holy Spirit is going to do something. He's going to make a change in you. Those of you that claim to be soldiers of the living Christ, I'll tell you what, my friend, today is the day when you need to get off your behind and get in the front line. I didn't mean to say that in an ugly way, but that's the way it's got to be. You claim to be a soldier of the most high God, my friend. Today is the day where you have to go out. Now more than ever, we need to win souls for the kingdom. So in the name of Jesus, this is for you. This is a wake-up call. Clap of praise for ushering in the presence of the Lord this morning. Just lift your hands right now and begin to praise him and love him and worship him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that's just been ushered into this place. I thank you, Father, for your presence that's here today. I thank you, Lord, for the ministering of your word to these men and women, God, that through these words, through these songs, through this worship and praise, God, you're going to minister to these today, and you're going to minister to us because we are there with them in the Spirit. So I just want to love you and praise you and welcome you today to Freedom and Jesus Ministries Church Service. We love you, and we're going to get started. So give the Lord one more hand clap of praise as Albert Gutierrez comes and brings praise and worship. Joe Novias is going to come and bring a wonderful testimony, and Greg White's going to bring the wonderful word of Jesus. So, and I've, amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high Lord, I lift your name on high Lord, I love to sing your praises so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, sing it with me. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. 
so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth to show the way From the earth to the cross my debt to pay From the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. Come on, right there where you're at. Give the Lord God Almighty, Lord Jesus. My huge praise offering, amen? amen. I want to do this song for y'all. Y'all, y'all are gonna recognize the tune. This is something I kind of rewrote over. Something that I was feeling one day. I was being grateful, and I kind of wrote this song a little bit, changed the words a little bit. Myself all alone trying to write you a love song to tell you Jesus how I feel about you I know that time has slipped away and none of us are here to stay that one day we'll be singing hallelujah hallelujah You're my Lord, the Son of God, the living Word. I know you came to die for this world. I know you went to Calvary, and now we live in victory so we can sing. Some things were wrong, but that's okay, cause you made me strong. If it wasn't for you, Lord, I'd be all alone. I thank you, Lord, for all the good times, for giving me love and a sound mind. Now I can sing, hallelujah. Oh 
provider, my defender. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Gracias, Cristo. Yo te adoro. Some of you guys that are listening, some of you ladies that are listening, perhaps uh, you find yourself lost. But today, the Spirit of the Living God says it's a day of salvation. Amen.
God is good all the time. I always want to do that. My name is Jordan Revise, and uh, at one time I was locked up. My number is 386644. Still is because I'm on parole. At one time I was given two life sentences. How did I get those life sentences? Well, it was kind of easy and hard. Doing those life sentences was the hardest thing. Well, anyhow, I'm not going to tell you any war stories about prison. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about about that song, Amazing Grace, how beautiful it is, right? Like it says, I was lost, now I'm found. Well, when I was a young boy, I got myself in trouble, and uh, I found myself going back to penitentiary. That was my third trip. Well, and uh, I was given, at that time, I was given two life sentences. I was sent back to East Ham, the House of Pain, and I was given that number, 386644. I remember when I got there in East Ham, you know, you go through UCC, get off that chain bus, go see the warden. He's going to tell you where you're going to work, where you're going to be housed. That warden looked at me straight in the eyes and said, boy, you brought you a lot of time. You will never leave East Ham. He said, you will die here. I remember that time. It was like piercing my heart. I heard those words before. I heard my sister crying, said, you'll never get out. But I had a praying mom. My mom would say, he's going to get out. He's going to get out. She would always say that. She would come visit me. She said, you're going to come home, baby. At, at times, I didn't believe that. I didn't have no hope. I would always hear those words saying, you'll never get out. You would die in East Ham. As years passed by in East Ham, the house of pain, Walking that yard, being in that cell, those words will haunt me. At nighttime, when I lay there in that bunk, everything be quiet. The only thing you hear sometimes that door slamming shut. You never get out. I didn't have no hope. Years passed by, same thing in and out, day and day, years and years. There's a saying in prison say, out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. Dressed in white and those black boots, working the fields, stuff like that. Same thing over and over. Gets old, being lonely, empty. I hated that. People come in and out of prisons, and that word, you're never going to get out. I didn't have no hope. The only hope that I had was Seeing my mom, like every six months, she would come visit me. She would say, you're going to get out, son. You got to believe. You got to have faith. But it will go from one ear to the other. I said, man, mom, can't you understand? I'm not going to get out. But I wouldn't tell her to her face because she would grab me and say, you are going to get out. You are going to get out. So I made it a point just to cheer her up and give her encouragement. I know, mama. I know. But in my heart, I didn't feel it that I was going to get out. One year was different. It was like, like this crusade, freedom in Jesus, what they're doing right now. But that time, it was another ministry. They put a poster board and said they were having a crusade out in the yard. Things were going to be different. And I said, well, I'm going to go out there to the yard. About, they put about 500 chairs out there in the yard. And I said to myself, well, I'm, I'm going to just shoot a kite. That means a letter to one of my homeboys. He's in another cell block. I know he makes store. I, I wanted some coffee, commissary, you know what I mean? So I told my homeboy, hey, homeboy, go to the yard. I can see you out there because everybody's going out there. Bring me some uh, coffee, some huariche. So that day, I found my way going to that yard, and I, I said, way in the back, way in the back, so I wouldn't disturb nobody. And I seen my homeboy. I haven't seen him for a couple of months. He done went home a couple of times, but he came back, you know, Maybe he likes prison. I don't know. Anyhow, I told him, say, homeboy, come over here. Sit right here. And, he, and I said, you brought the water And he said, yeah, I got it right here. How you doing, homeboy? I said, how things going? You know how it is in prison. You just talk a little bit. But that time was different for me. As to praise and worship, this long-haired dude got up there, and he said, he started out and says, I had two life sentences, and I'm free. 
Everybody in prison wants to be free. Yeah, everybody want to be free. And that caught my attention. How did he get out and he got two life sentences? And I told my homeboy, say, homeboy, I just want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to you. Come on, homeboy, you don't want to listen to that. I said, let me listen to this, man. You keep going home and coming back. I want to, I want to go home and stay out. <laughs> oh, homeboy, you don't have to go there. Anyhow, I found myself listening to this man. And he, all he talked about was Jesus. But I wanted to know how he got out. So after the crusade, I found myself wanting to talk to this man. So the crusade was over, and he was standing up there. There were people lining up, shaking other people's hand, going to back to the cell block. And I raced up there quickly. And I said, hey, dude, how did you get out, man? And this man said, Jesus. I said, no, nah, dude, how did you get out, man? Who was your attorney? He said, Jesus, Jesus. I wasn't getting nowhere with this man. I said, no, nah, dude, how did you really get out, man? He said, Jesus. At that time, that man flipped the script on me. He said, when are you getting out? I said, I'm never going to get out, dude. My time sheet says 9999999. Nine, That's never going to come. And then I got to finish that one, start another one. I'm never going to get out. He said, don't ever say that. He said, out of your mouth proceeds blessings and curses. That's scripture. I heard that before. In your tongue, you have the power of life and death. I heard that before. But he caught my attention. He told me this. Brother, you got to have faith. That's something my mom had told me from day one. You got to have faith. You got to believe. Now this guy was telling me the same thing my mom's been telling me from day one. You have to have, to have faith. And he said, claim a date. He told me, claim a date. I didn't have no date. My day was, I don't know when I'm going to get out. I'm going to die in prison. That's what will go through my mind daily. He said, claim a date. And I just looked at him. I didn't know what to say. He said, say any date now. Claim a date, brother. He told me to claim a date. I'm no rocket scientist, but he said, say any day now that you will get out. I said, any day now, fool, I will get out and stay out. That's what I told him. You know what I mean? Did things change for me that day? Yeah, it changed. That hope turned into faith, believing that I had a date. Say, any day now, I will get out. I left from there walking taller. My lungs were full of the Holy Spirit, saying, I am going to get out. Any day now. And I just forgot about that Warisha, that coffee, my homeboy raced over there. He said, What do you tell you, homeboy? What do you tell you? I said, I'm going home, man. I'm going home. When? Any day now, fool, and I will stay out. <laughs> Any day now, I will stay out. I'm going home. He said, What do I do with this Warisha, this coffee? I said, Give it over here, man. While I'm waiting, I'm going to drink it, right? <laughs> you know, did my any day now come that week, that month, that year? It didn't come that. But I believe, I believe, I have faith. When my mama come visit me, she hold my hand. She said, baby, you're going to come home. I said, I believe it, mama. Any day now, any day now. I know it. She will grab my face with soft hands. I said, I know you're going to come home any day now, mama. She said, she would tell me this even sooner. <laughs> she wanted her son to come home, you know what I mean? But check this out. As time went by, I got sent from East Ham to Robinson Unit. My parents got older, couldn't make that long drive. I got over there in Robinson Unit. The warden told me he was going to give me a Cadillac job. I was going to make his ice cream and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I got me a good job and stuff like that. Robinson, it was called Rocky Robinson. It was different, a lot of youngsters. And uh, I can say this. When I got there, people started saying, that's old school, he got double life. But they knew I was going to go home any day now. They knew me. He's going home any day now. Well, I found favor, and I was given parole. My any day now did come. I was so blessed, man, when I got out. God is so good. I've been out 15 years, but check this out. Brother Steve Cannon told me this one time. Never forget this. I was working in my shop. I've been blessed with a body shop. 
work on cars now. He called me, he says, we're going to go to another prison. You ready to go? And I said, I'm always ready. He told me like this, you know the Lord's coming any day now. Any day now. This thing that's going on right now, are you ready? That any day now will come. Jesus is going to come. We don't know the time, the day. Nobody knows. That any day now will come. Are you ready? The brother here is going to bring the word. You any day now will come. Are you going to be ready? I love you guys. God bless you. What a great testimony that we overcome the devil with by the power of the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. We give Jesus all the glory in the house. He's worthy of the glory that you bring him. Amen. You know, it's all about Jesus. He didn't die to save a religious body. He died to establish a personal, intimate, holy relationship with each of you and with myself. He is a friend of publicans and sinners. He came to seek and save those who were lost, of whom I'm the chief. I needed a Savior. I needed someone who would understand me. Someone that in my sin could fill the emptiness and the void, the fears and the anxieties and the brokenness and the concerns about eternity that I had in my soul. I know in this day that, that every one of you has needs. All of us have needs. And so in the in this morning service, I just want to greet you in the name of Jesus and pray that he'll bless you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms and that you would prosper and be healthy as your soul prospers. Amen. I was in a prison not long ago and I was preaching the word of the living God. And I said to the congregation that day, I said, how many of you believe that Jesus will meet all of your needs from his riches and glory? Philippians 4.19. Raise your hand. They raised their hands. I said, put your hands down. I said, how many of you really believe that Jesus himself will meet all of your needs from his riches and glory? They raised their hands. I said, uh, put your hands down. I said, I believe it also. With all my heart, I believe that Jesus is more than sufficient to meet all of our needs from his riches and glory. However, I have a problem with that. And they looked at me kind of strange. Maybe like you're thinking, what's he talking about? You know, the honest truth is that I don't want to be in need. If I have a need, whatever that need is, I go to the doctor, the chiropractor, the counselor, the pastor. I go, or a rabbi, or somebody, a priest, somebody I can talk to. I go to a banker, I go to an auto mechanic, I go to uh, whatever the need is that I have. If I have a need, I go and I find somebody that can help me with that need. But the Bible says, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to the doctor. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to the dentist or to the optometrist or to the whatever it is when you have a need. I'm saying is that there ought to be an opportunity for us to seek Jesus first. Amen. He is the great physician. He is the one who meets all of our needs. He is the answer to your life's brokenness and emptiness. He gives us everything that we need for life and godliness. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Because you can have everything that he says you can have. And you can be everything that he says you can be. And you can do in Jesus Christ everything that he says that you can do. That means you can be more than a conqueror in Christ. You can do all things through Christ. He can be greater in you than the enemy that's in the world, whether it's coronavirus or the devil himself. 
Jesus will build his kingdom in your heart and life if you'll surrender to have a relationship with him. And that somehow, as all things work together for good, because you now love the Lord and are called to his purpose, that in Jesus' name, he will be greater in you than the enemy that's in the world, whatever that enemy is. Amen. And he will meet every need that you have from his riches in glory. Amen. You say, how do I know that? Because of some things that Jesus himself said. This is not Greg White saying these things, although I am the voice crying in the wilderness this morning, saying to you that there is hope, as my brother Joe said. There is life. There is freedom. Jesus comes to set the captive free, give him praise in the house. First thing Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus himself said to his disciples, The Son of the living God said, All power, or authority, all power in heaven, that's the spiritual realm, and on earth, that's the human realm we live in, all power, not some, not a little, not just a, a small amount, not when you need it or when you're sleeping or if he's not on vacation or out doing something else, not because we deserve it, but he has all power in the heavenly realm and on the earth. Amen. The devil's defeated. And Jesus Christ is sufficient because he has, how much power does he have? All, all power. I wonder if that's enough power to save you to the uttermost. I wonder if that's enough power to keep you from falling. I wonder if that's enough power, brother, to set you out of prison free. Because he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Give him praise in the house. Second thing he said, these are his words. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, he said, All things, how many things? All things, not a few things, not some things. All things are possible with God. Amen. And he said, I and my Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You see, the thing is, Jesus Christ is the living God. Amen. How do you know that? Because he has all power in heaven and on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. He defeated sin. He defeated death. He, defe he never held a funeral. Amen. Only resurrections. Amen. He can heal all the sick. I was preaching a revival in a Nazarene church in Waco one time. And I got up the first night and I proclaimed the word of the living God. Gave an altar call. Nothing happened. We had a great service. The Spirit of God was there. It was wonderful. We were all in unity. And, but we went home without seeing anything happen in that service that night. The second night of the revival, I came. And just before I got ready to preach after the song service and prayer and the offering and all that, I got up and I said, is there anybody here that has a testimony that you'd like to give about an experience you've had with the Lord recently? The lady in the back right middle section of the, an elderly lady, probably in her 80s, raised her hand, and the whole congregation went, wow, glory to God. I'm going, what happened? She just raised her hand. She said, may I testify? I said, yes, ma'am, you may. She stood up. She said, Brother White, last night while you were preaching the word of the living God, Jesus came by and walked down this aisle, and he touched me at the point of my shoulder because for about 30 or 40 years now I'd have some kind of an itis. I didn't know whether it was arthritis or bursitis, one of those itises in my shoulder, and I've been in so much pain all these years I couldn't raise my arm. And he touched me last night, and I'm completely well. And she started praising God, and everybody in the church was blessed. I said, wow, glory to God. I didn't even know Jesus was there. I didn't sense him. I didn't see him. There wasn't any evidence the first night. I said, anybody else have a testimony? Well, a lady over at this side of the, the sanctuary, over here to the, this side, about halfway back, she stood up and she said, Brother White, I've got a testimony. I said, yes, ma'am. She walked over and she started doing one of these numbers with her leg. Everybody in the congregation knew her, and they, went, they were just praising the Lord. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, 
Yesterday while you were preaching the word of God. And lifting up Jesus Christ the Lord. He came by, walked by my aisle, and he touched my knee. She said, I've been in so much pain for the last 30 or 40 years. One of those other itises. I don't know what it was, but, but bursitis, arthritis, something. But she was in such pain, she couldn't hardly bend her knee, couldn't hardly. Anybody that's ever had knee pain, you know what I'm talking about, right? She said, look at this. And she's doing one of these numbers. She said, today, I've been walking around leaping, praising, and shouting, and giving God the glory because I've been totally healed by Jesus last night while you were preaching the, the word of God. And the congregation bursts out with praise. And all of a sudden, 10 people in the congregation all stood up at the same time and said, me too, me too, me too. Unbeknownst to me, Jesus walked into the house of God there in Waco, Texas in a Nazarene church in a revival service and healed every single person in that body of Christ all in one service while I was preaching and didn't even know it. Hallelujah. How much power is that? He still speaks and ten lepers are healed at once. He still speaks and John... Uh, well, I just could go on and on and on. Lazarus comes out of the tomb after four days being dead. Good thing he said Lazarus or everybody that ever died would have come back to life. He still feeds a multitude with a tuna fish sandwich. You know, the boy gave the fish and the bread. Jesus added the miracle whip <laughs> and gave everybody the, the bread that he broke and prayed over and the fish that he broke and prayed over. And when he got done, there was more left than what he began with. Let me tell you something about Jesus, my brothers and sisters. He is sufficient. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, he said, all things are possible with God. What kind of possibility do you have today to have all of your needs met from his riches and glory? In Jesus' name. If you'll seek him while he can be found and call on him while he is near. If you'll look to the Lord as the source of your hope and help and strength in this time of need. And don't kid yourself, all of us have needs. My Bible says that he knows, Jesus knows what we need before we ask him. I wonder if there's enough power to meet your need. All power in heaven and earth is mine. I wonder if it's possible. Well, all things are possible with me, with God. And then he tells us in his own sermon, he's a much better preacher than I ever could begin to even think about. He said in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, chapters 5, 6, and 7, at the end of his sermon on the mountain to the disciples that they were sitting on the ground, he said to them in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, these words. To all of them, ask and you, anybody know that, shall receive. Not maybe, not could be, not possibly, not if you're good enough, not if you've earned it or deserved it, no. He said, ask and you shall receive. Asking demands receiving. As your faith is, so be it. If you come to seek the Lord while he can be found, I promise you he can be found. When you seek him with all your heart, he said, I'll be found by you, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, and I'll bring you back from captivity. Amen. The promise of his spirit is to you and to your children and to your children's children in these last days. As many as God would call. And he's calling you to believe. I believe in a Savior that I've never seen. I asked to see him one time. I said, Jesus, let me see you. He said, no. I said, but Lord, he said, no. I said, Lord, he said, what? <laughs> He's not my buddy, 
but he's my best friend. He's my Savior, my Lord, and my God, and I have a relationship with him. I don't take him, you know, loosely because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But I said, Jesus, I pastored people who have seen you, and they live to testify about it. I have family members that have seen you. He said, yes, I know, son. I said, did you not? Now I'm quoting the word to him. That was kind of foolish on my part. But I said, Lord, didn't you say that if I serve you and love you that you'd give me the desires of my heart? He said, I will. I said, I want to see you. He said, no. Like a little kid, I said, well, why not? You know what he said? Jesus said to me, he said, I don't want to take away your blessing. I said, what? He said, son, I don't want to take away your blessing. I said, Lord, it would be a blessing to get to see you. He said, well, you will see me and know me for all eternity, even as you are known. But then he started quoting the word of God to me. And I went, oh, man, I'm in trouble now. He said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. For the just shall live by their faith and not by sight. And he went on that way for a while, and I finally broke, and I said, God, I don't think like you think. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and your ways past finding out. I said, Jesus, I will never again ask to see you in this life. I'll be content with such things as I have, and I will love you with all my heart by faith and not by sight. Don't take away my blessing. Because the blessing of the Lord, brothers and sisters, it makes rich. And he adds, no sorrow with it. Jesus said, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock. And the door shall be opened. Now, if you know anything about a relationship with Jesus in the Bible, you'll know not only in whom you have believed and be persuaded that he's able to keep everything you commit to him against that day. Not only that he's a present help in time of need. You'll discover that for yourself. If you develop a relationship, he'll be greater in you than the enemy that's in the world. He'll protect you and provide for you and answer prayer. Be your light and salvation. Whom then shall we fear? Amen. Jesus is the strength of our lives. Amen. Of whom shall we be afraid in this hour? He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is everything that we need for life in this world and for godliness. Eternally. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To the glory of the Father. You said, but I'm so alone. You don't have to be. Jesus said, if you'll invite him into your heart, that, that he would be a present help in your time of need. Present help. One of his names is Emmanuel. God with us. He didn't say it'd be easy. He didn't say you wouldn't have needs. He didn't say it wouldn't be a problem and a trial to serve him. What he did say is I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never abandon you. Everyone that knocks on his door he will open a door that no one can shut and pour out a blessing that can't be contained. But in Matthew chapter 7, his words, 7 and 8, he says, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open." And then he says, For everyone who asks. He repeats himself. Now, we're, I'm not everyone, but I'm someone. You're someone. Together we make up everyone. Everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks the door shall be opened. 
Now let me ask you. If you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, everything else will be added. So you have some needs. Well, go to Jesus first with those needs. Find some scriptures in the Bible because the word of God, God says in, in Isaiah chapter 50, uh, 55, verse 11, My word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire. What is God's desire for you in the word of God? God's not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. God takes no death in the wicked, no pleasure in the death of the wicked, excuse me. But whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Amen. He says, my word will not return to me empty. Verse 11, chapter 55 of Isaiah. It will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God has a purpose for sending you today his living word. It is sharp. It is powerful. It divides between the very joints and marrow of your bone. It divides between your soul and your spirit. God's word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. How powerful it is. It's like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. When he created the world, he created it in the spoken word of God. When Jesus came into the world and the word was made flesh, he spoke like no one else spoke. He could speak to the winds and waves. He could walk on the water. He could do, well, he's God. All power in heaven and earth is in him. Did you know that you can always trust the one who died for you? How much does he love you? I can't even hug my brothers and sisters in Christ nowadays because of this virus. But Jesus embraces me. Amen. First Corinthians 13, 8 says, love, God is love. Love never fails. His love will not give up on you. You don't have to serve him. You don't have to love Jesus. It's a relationship he's willing to commit himself to if you're willing to participate in it. You say, Brother White, what, what, how do I deal with this? Well, if you have your Bible, you can turn over into the book of Revelation, the last book of the, uh, the 66 books of the Bible, and you can turn to chapter 3, verse 20. Chapter 3 of Revelation, verse 20. And this is the words of Jesus. Jesus himself says, Behold, behold me. I stand at the door and I knock. What is the door? That's the door to our hearts. You see, Jesus will not take advantage of you. He will not force you to love him. He will not beat the door down in your life and make you serve him. But the invitation is there that whoever hears, I'll do a work in their lives. So if you're hearing this gospel today, May you hear what the Spirit of God says to the church and may you be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Jesus in Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. That's not how he knocks. You see, the reason we can't hear Jesus knocking is because in our society up until this last few weeks, we have been so busy and so noisy that we can't hear the soft knock of Jesus. It's more like this. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Then he says, If any man or woman, any person, hears my voice. How does Jesus speak? My name is Greg. You think this is how he speaks at my front door? He says, Greg, I'm here at your front door. <laughs> no. He has all power in heaven and earth. He'd overwhelm me if he just lifted his voice. The Bible says that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, speaks with a whisper. He says, 
Can you all hear that? Greg. Greg. What he's really saying to you today is, I'm knocking on your heart. And I'm speaking your name. You see, though I've never seen Jesus, my sheep know, I know my sheep by their name. You're not a number to him. You're a name. And when you give your life to Christ, he's going to give you a new name written down in his book of life. I don't know what my new name is. But I know he, my father in heaven, is going to name me. And his name for me is going to fit my personality and the creative genius of God who made me in his image. And his son who died for me and forgave my sins and cleansed my heart. I thank Jesus every day of my life that I'm serving a God that I can't see, but I know he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You say, I haven't found. Well, maybe you just need to keep knocking on heaven's door. Naaman had to wash himself seven times in the river Jordan in order to be cleansed of his leprosy. Elijah had to pray through seven times in the story of the, of the rain that would come down from heaven and end the drought in Egypt at the Mount Carmel experience. You can read it in the Bible. Jesus had to pray through three times in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross, saying, not my will, but thy will be done, Father. By the way, when Jesus answers your prayers, how does he do so? Exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything you can ask or even think according to his spirit that works within you. He who has all power in heaven and on earth, he who makes all things possible as God in your life, he who, if you ask, you shall receive, he who, if you seek him, you shall find, if you knock on his door, it shall be opened. How much more will the Father with Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God give you everything you need for life and godliness? Everything that you have to have to succeed in your life is there for everyone who will pay the price to get it. Let me repeat that. Everything that you have to have to succeed and be fulfilled and to be blessed and to be included with Christ in your life is there for everyone who pay the price to get it. How does that happen? Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, great. And open the door. You see, today, we can choose to open the door of our hearts. Jesus said, if you'll open the door, because you hear my voice, and you hear me knocking, I will come in unto you, and sup with you, and you with me. In other words, I will come into your life. The same Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary years ago and conceived in her womb the life of Jesus Christ the Lord. It's the same Holy Spirit wherever it is that you are today that you're hearing this word of God. Jesus is in the house. Amen. Are you sick? He can meet that need and heal in Jesus' name. You see, his covenant's in force. When Jesus said it's finished, the covenant of the Old Testament law had been completely fulfilled. And now the new covenant in his blood is in force. A covenant of grace and mercy and love. Thank God for his forgiveness. That he doesn't judge us as our sins deserve. With him there is forgiveness. Therefore he's feared. When he comes in, the same Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary... And conceived in her womb the life of Christ is the same Holy Spirit right now that you hear knocking on your heart and speaking your name. That if you'll open the door to your heart, God's Spirit will come 
and he will conceive in your life the life of Jesus Christ the Lord. And you'll be given eternal life as a gift. You see, he works on the inside by relationship. That's what it means in the Holy Spirit to be born again. Not of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. You can have a lot of head knowledge and still not be changed in your heart. You need to have a relationship with Jesus. And you know what happens when you have a need in your life and you seek him first for it? You find the word of God and you apply it like my brother was testifying. His mom said, you're going to come home, son. And she prayed and believed God. And for long, God sent someone to testify to that. And then my brother here believed his, uh, the, the word of the Lord and his mom and said, I'm getting out. I believe God. And it happened. It happened. What happens when you have a need in your life that's met? By the Lord Jesus Christ, whether he saved your soul or healed you or delivered you or provided for you, answer your prayer for your family and kids, I don't know what he'll do in this house. Maybe you're uh, afraid or fearful. You can take the word of God that says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. We overcome evil with good. How do you overcome fear? With faith. Fear says I'm never getting out. Faith says all things are possible with God. <laughs> Fear says, well, I'm so weak. Faith says, well, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You say, can I really have what he says I can have? Can I really be a new, Christ, a new creature in Christ, a Christian? You see, when Jesus moves into your life, he brings with him everything you need for your life and for godliness. We partake of his divine nature by the promises of God, those exceeding great and precious promises. And he works in us to do and the will of his pleasure. You say, how does a God in this circumstance work all things out together for our good? He has all power. If you ask, you may have to ask a bunch of times. You just keep coming back and saying, Lord, I believe your word. Because faith is the victory that overcomes the world. I believe what you said. The truth will set me free. I believe. I believe. I believe. Are you a believer today? Open your heart right now. If you will, just bow your head. Close your eyes. And I'm going to lead you in a word of prayer as we close this service. If you'll pray this, you can pray it out loud if you're okay with doing that. But either way, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask that you pray with me. I'll not lead you astray in this. I'm going to lead you to Christ, to repent and trust Christ. You need a personal relationship with him to take you through these days, to give you victory over death, over sin, over hell, over the devil, over whatever need you have. It has to surrender to the lordship and power and possibility and presence of Jesus. And so we're going to ask and seek and knock right now together. Okay, everybody bow your head, close your eyes. Say out loud after I do, please. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for your word this morning. And I thank you for your presence here. I hear your voice as you call my name. I hear you knocking on my heart's door. And I thank you for the offer of life and relationship with you. I admit, Jesus, that I have failed you at times and that I have sinned against you and others and myself. 
And God, I am sorry for all that I've done. To shame myself. And I come and repent before you. And I invite you to come into my heart and into my life and to be my Lord and my Savior, my God and my friend. I pray that you'll help me to live a life worthy of your glory from now on in Jesus' name and make things right with those that I've hurt wherever I can. And I thank you for your faithfulness to hear my prayer and to answer it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him praise in the house. I just want to say I love you and it's been a joy and privilege to share the word of the living God with you. I pray that somehow today that the presence of Jesus will be with you always to the end of the age. You can always look to him, the source of your encouragement, the source of your hope, the source of your help in time of need. What a great and awesome and mighty God Jesus Christ is. Give him praise in the house. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Love you. God bless you. Amen.